Alex, I'll be giving a certifiable application security specialist talk, um, mostly contract, uh, contrasting dumbasses and smartasses. Um, again, my name's Alex. I've sort of gone by a few names. Um, some call me Silk. So I've been called a hacker. I've been called a geek. And before the end of the day today, at least five of you will call me an ass straight to my face. Um, so without th further ado, um, again, this is my ass presentation. Feel free to ask all the ass questions you want. Um, it's going to be mostly about security testing. More specifically, it's going to be about assessments and reporting. Um, assessments make sense. It's important. I feel reporting is more important. Assessments, it's an obvious point. We, it's what they pay for. We do testing. We get results. That's what we, that's what we do. Um, reports always feels a little less important sometimes, but it always take everyone hates doing reports. It takes up like a third of our time. However, it's more important even than the testing, in my opinion, because that's all they that's all they get for to show for our assessment. If you're the best tester in the world and do a crappy report, then guess what? They get crappy results. Um, again, it's going to zoom in and out. My goal is to get you as sick as possible, and at the end, it will zoom out into Goatsy. Um, no, I'm just kidding. It, it's it's meat. It's it actually meat spin. Um, <laughs> um, application security specialists, people who test software for a living, they test web. Again, I'm sort of generalizing a lot of people into this category. A good application security specialist, a good ass, a smart ass, will. will they're great people. They're funny. Um, they're hot, um, like many of the people out there. Um, they help you be more secure. They find, um, they find stuff is probably the best way. They can find errors. They can find bugs. They can find defects. Um, they can stop you from getting owned. Um, they help you fix stuff. They give you ways of remediating, the, uh, remediating those issues. They go beyond a normal dumb smartass who who will show you a bug and then show you just how to fix it, they'll get down to the root cause. They'll show you, your input validation sucks. You should do a training which, which will help stop this, and they'll make you a better developer. They'll help you create not only a testing plan, but even an education plan. Well, you know, this is a training. This is a certification. This is an offensive security lab you can do, which will make you a better developer or a better tester. And they'll help you understand the data. Again, getting farther down into the data and coming to conclusions which aren't just, don't let a single quote go into the field. Dumbasses, or dumb application specialists. Um, they, they suck, they're stupid people because they, they really take advantage of a, a flaw in security. Because they make you think you're secure when you're not. They make the rest of us look bad because they overcharge their products. And they take advantage of a security testing flaw, which is we don't know what we don't know. Now, that sounds redundant. What I mean by that is a, a plumber, for instance, if he goes into your house and he fixes your leaky pipe, if it's leaking, well, guess what? They suck at their job because it's, it's leaking. Now, if we suck at our job and we, we don't find stuff, we do an infrastructure scan and be like, nope, you're good, then they might never know that they're boned if someone gets the application. Um, it, it's, that, it's really that obvious. You can do a sucky test and still present it in a great way. This is actually why, as I said, reporting is more important. If you can publish a great report with, if you, you can practically fake a report without doing any testing and make it look like you know what you're talking about, if you're a good reporter. But again, we don't know what we don't know, so if, if they make a good report, or you know, it, it's it, it's going to show, or I mean, it might not show a hacker until a hacker gets in with it. Not sure if being smartass or dumbass. Assessments again, zooming out and zooming in as much as possible. Um, what do you get with a dumbass? A dumbass when that original conversation starts. And again, I'm hoping at the end of this talk you have learned. How can I avoid dumbasses, at least in the security realm? Um, they say things like, all I need is an IP address. And though that's, a, that's an OK thing, again, that sounds good. They do it, well, I'm that good. All I need is the IP address. This will make a little bit more sense when we get to 
um, when we get to the smart, uh, smart ass. And when all you need is the IP address, it really makes scoping difficult because you're trusting the client to actually know what they want, know what they, you should be testing. If you go, I just want the IP address, again, who, who's to say there might be 10 other IP addresses open to the system that are open to the internet that they don't know about? So that's always something which gets you worried. Um, we do things like an attacker will. No, you won't because you can't. You're on a week schedule, you go from Monday to Friday and you get as much testing done as you can and probably about at least a day or two of that is reporting because I don't know about you guys, but reporting sucks for my job. Um, I do think it's going to get better and that's something I'll get back to when we come to reporting. Um, you will be hacked. No, most likely you won't. Um, if you do infrastructure problems, you get a couple people who scan the entire internet looking for them, they get found. A lot of application bugs go unnoticed for years. I mean, you can look at what Anonymous has done with Sony and stuff like that. Those issues didn't happen overnight. They didn't happen in a month. They've been there for probably years until someone found them. Um, so the you will be hacked sword isn't always the, be the best argument. Um, but let's say you go ahead, you hire them, it sucks to be you. Um, and it's not, a ba it's not your fault if you hire a dumbass. It's really because you're not an ass. You don't know what to look for. So in this, again, you want to educate yourself. Just because they have a CISSP does not mean they have a clue what they're talking about. I know people who have CISSPs who do. I'm not, say, I'm not bashing the certificate, even though you just have to memorize some things and then you can get it. Um, there are certs out there which are great. Uh, again, I don't work for offensive security. I use Backtrack a lot, but I hold two certs, and actually I'll be getting my third soon. They're awesome. They're, they're great certs to have because, again, you, need, you learn it. There's videos. There's labs. And then what happens is you, you actually take a hands-on assessment, like the OSCE, you know, I think the pass rate is like 10%. Like 90% of the people, they don't release it, but like 90% of the people who take it, their first time fail it, and they don't get the cert, which is awesome. So what's the dumbass gonna do? You hired him, well, he's gonna run Nessus. Again, all of this is actually, if you're lucky. Um, he'll, he'll run Nessus, he'll run Nmap. He'll obsess over one finding because he's so happy that he used the little bit of wits he has to find cross-site scripting one place and then find it a million places all over the application. And he's an idiot because what happens, if it exists one place, the developer obviously doesn't know how to protect against it. Therefore, he's gonna find it, I mean, he's gonna find it every single form field. This is not what a smart person does or a smart tester does. If you're really lucky, he might actually poke around the application. Um, he might run proprietary scripts or something like that. Um, if you're really lucky, they might actually do an application, st uh, application scan. Most of them I've, I've talked to will do infrastructure scanning and think it's actually helping the application, and it's not. Infrastructure testing is great, but it's not, it's not the most um, important one. This is an example of a report, and I kid you not, this was pulled out of a report. And it's not a bad finding. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna hit that. It's unbranded error pages. You hit 404s for, and again, the, the blackouts and stuff like that are just because I, this is really all I wanted to keep the company's name out of it. Um, and because I used to work for him. Anywho, um, 404, okay, cool. You get like an error page. So what they did is they showed one screenshot and then they showed another screenshot and another screenshot. Okay, so we're two pages into one finding. Cool. Notice this isn't like SQL injection. This is just like, a rant, this is a default error messaging. Um, so they give a couple examples, cool, that's okay. Um, they even give you some URLs, again, I know I'm just showing a big blue block, but again, I'm not showing the URLs. But okay, so 404 errors. You get them when you go to a page that doesn't exist. So using the sky as an example, if you point at a star, that one's there, that one's there. What they're doing here is saying, well, that one doesn't exist, if you go to slash, qrstv189.html, okay, that's a 404. I'm gonna use that as an example. So I'm gonna make up another number and I'm gonna do that one, I'm gonna do that one. And they, they went on and they gave a few examples and a few more, a few more. It, and they ended up coming, this is four pages of a report for 404 errors. This was a smarter dumbass. 
they did a great scan of the application, probably with burp, and got all these results back and go, oh my gosh, I need to put this in the report. But don't worry, they gave a recommendation of two lines for four or five pages of wasted text. Awesome. You have the power to stop this. First, you ask questions before you hire them. In every, I shouldn't have to say this, but every assessment, don't make like some 10 year agreement with a company because in 10 years, they might not be as smart as they were then. This is why you wanna keep updated. How do they keep updated? Do they go to conferences like GERCON or do they sit in their basement playing World of Warcraft or something? Um, look, ask to see old reports. Like, tell them I want them. And if they go, oh, well, no, there's proprietary information, tell them to strip it. If they want to sell you on a 10 grand penetration test or vulnerability assessment, they can strip that to earn your, to, to earn your money. Um, you, ha you probably have an NDA signed with them anyway. Tell them just to show them to you. Um, old reports, ask for references. Um, even more importantly, ask them if they actually know what they're doing and let them prove it to you. That's probably the easiest. Do you know what you're doing? And let, let them tell you. Um, if they talk about, and this goes also without saying, but if they talk about tools and scanning more than the, about their process, that should be setting off alarm bells. Also, this was a point made last year. I forgot who gave the talk, but I wanted to actually call them out. If they use the words, we use proprietary tools a lot, yeah, you should be, again, dumbass alert going off. Um, because it, he made a good point last year. If they're that good, they would be selling them and they wouldn't, they wouldn't be keeping them internal. Proprietary scripts and whatnot, that's, that's cool. It, it's mainly because most hackers are completely lazy like me. So I want to script up as much as everything I can do into one thing. Again, if I wanted to DNS, pull an NMAP, because it's all due diligence testing sometimes, if you want to pull NMAP DNS, I'll look at the SSL certificates and all of that. You can script that all up so it's like one button and it all goes. But again, they talk more about tools and scanning. It's, there's an issue there. Sick yet? Anyone? Assessments for smart ass now. Awesome. Um, ooh, starting the assessment, right off the bat. They should be doing scoping and process. What should we be testing? If it's an external vulnerability assessment, IP addresses are great. I want the ranges so I can tell you what's there, how it works, what we're gonna test, and also talking about what we're gonna do for each system. Just because no findings are found, you can actually listen. This is what I did on this IP address. This is the due diligence testing I did on this, this system. Um, it was running on port 80, so I want it, you can, you, you can leverage tools to get more breadth in your testing, um, but it's, it's the right tool for a job. And they follow a methodology. They should be telling you, I, I, I work off of the OWASP if it's a web assessment, networking assessment. I use the OSS TMM. I use you know, embedded whatever. I mean, Apple developer security methodology, any of those. And again, it should be able to include that in the report or hand it to you and say, this is what I worked off of. All of these things were checked. They can create things like this. I, again, this was made in Gliffy in about five minutes. And then the, uh, then, you know, the smart ass can go through here is, we're gonna test this system and this system and this system. We're gonna look at the configs for this router and then be very specific. If you're looking for someone to do testing for you, make sure they're specific and not, well, we run tools or we do this or, I mean, make, it, make them be specific, require them to be specific. Um, they're gonna have clear definition. Gliffy is an awesome tool. If, if you don't wanna buy Visio, I don't like Visio. Um, there's a lot of power to it. Gliffy is awesome because it's cheap. It works great. It's very easy to share. You can export it into anything. Um, a smart ass will do a couple good examples of one vulnerability and move on. They won't just perseverate over one finding because they learned, oh, I know how to look for cross-site scripting, so I'm gonna find it all over the application. If it exists one place, it's going to exist other places. Your job, again, is not to find every finding, in my opinion, because I think there's, I forget who was speaking earlier, he said he's never, find an, he's never found an application which is 100% secure. He always finds something. If that's the case, again, unless the client asks for it, again, you tell them up front, 
you're gonna, you wanna find one or two good examples and move on because you can then create strategy based off of those things saying, you need to teach the developers to be the security analyst. Hey, this is how we found it, this is how we reproduced it. You put a, a single quote into this form, if it generates an error, fix it. And you can do that throughout the application. You don't have to show every instance of it. The best thing a smart ass will do is he will do three types of testing. He will look at the infrastructure, middleware, and the application. Dumbass really only looks at infrastructure and maybe middleware. If he runs Nessus, well, cool, he hits two of them. And that's a lot of what I see in testing. And that's what my gripe is about, why I did this talk. It's just a lot of testing hits infrastructure and middleware, which is important, but you don't have to pay 15 grand for an assessment. And if you're selling this, I mean, I want this to go off and you're right, if you, and this is why I'm gonna be called an ass, if you are selling a, a $15,000 assessment to run Nessus, stop doing it because you're making the rest of us look like asses. An actual ass, not an application security specialist. Um, your goal, your, what you're being paid for is to test the application because most tools can't test that. WebInspect will do some things, Burp will do some things, but it's not gonna look at any business logic. For instance, can I put a negative number in to buy something and then get money back? Um, can I buy a house for a negative number? I mean, the application's not gonna know these things. So your goal is to test the application. Teach them how to teach the infrastructure in Metal Two reasons, one, because they can do it a lot cheaper and it's a waste of your time and skills. And application testing is a lot more fun and you're get, you get more customers this way because they understand they can't do that. When they find out, oh, I, I found this new tool called Nessus, I can run it and get all the same findings they did, why am I paying 15 grand? Reporting, something which is extremely close to my heart. Dumbass reporting. Now again, I might offend someone. A dumbass report is someone who concentrates on issues and remediation. Now, a lot of reports look this, look this way. They have, here's cross-site scripting, here's where it was, steps to reproduce, here's how to fix it. That information is great. However, our reports, if we want to evolve and actually start helping them, we have to not only teach them how to do this, and it doesn't have to be in the report even, it can be in the report out, teach them how to do this. Plus your salesperson will absolutely love you for this when you say, hey, they had cross-site scripting, they need this type of training, or their infrastructure sucked, they need patch management training, or we can sell them on a patch management server. It, it's br brilliant. Um, a dumbass can amazingly have made up issues. Um, Awesome. Ability to exploit Windows administrative account. Blah, 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 blah. This is how they reproduce it. Connect to the, syst uh, the, the remote system using RDP with encryption. Clearly, that's important. Log into the system using the credentials that were provided for the internal assessment. Once the desktop loads, open command prompt, right click on the executable and select run as administrator. Click OK through the pop-up, command prompt, and the command prompt will load as the administrator without the need for a password. There was a username there I had to block out. Um, use this user to install a backdoor and take control of the server. Okay, so first, first issue, and I knew this, probably because they didn't make it here, probably because they would have been called out on it. They were given domain admin access for an internal penetration, or internal vulnerability assessment. That's like, that's like me going, hey Matt, I'm gonna hand you the keys to my car and I want you to do security testing. Tell me if I need an oil change or whatnot. He goes in the car, he unlocks the car, jumps in the car, drives away and calls me on the phone and say, hey, guess what, I stole your car. And know how you fix this? You remove the gas pedal so I can't steal it anymore. Read this, this is insane. Disable right-click functionality on the server so the user is unable to run as administrator, thus performing administrative functions without a password. You've got to be shitting me. Are you kidding me? Like, if this doesn't piss you off, like, as a tester, this... Steal, here's the keys to my car. Yeah, the fix is to remove the gas pedal. Awesome. Smart ass. There is... 
Four stakeholders in every vulnerability assessment penetration test. Executives, other analysts like yourself, developers, and then salesmen, believe it or not, if you work in a consulting business. Even if you don't, if you work in an enterprise business, you still sort of sell your sales internally, especially at a huge enterprise because they can always go elsewhere. Executives, a smart ass in his report will give what's needed to each individual. This is where dumb asses go, problem, remediation. It doesn't help executives because they're the ones who spend the money and they're the ones who decide whether or not you go to GERCON. Analysts, like me, what was tested? What was your scope? Scope should be very specific in your reports because when I come back a year later and test, even if I'm the one who did the test, I'm not gonna know what in the world was tested a year later because I have one a week. The developer, again, the executive wants to know, where do we go from here? Is this gonna hurt my pocketbook in any way? Or is this gonna slow down us going to market with our product? Developer, what's broken, how do I fix it? They're the key group to say, here's, the, here's what's broken, here's how you fix it. And then how do I stop doing this in the future? Salesmen, they suck at input validation. We sell a secure, a developer secu, you know, a secure coding training. Sell it to them. Now, again, they're gonna get sold one way or another. That salesman is going to call them and say, hey, it's been six months, let's, go, let's do this again. But when he can call them and say, hey, based on your last report, you had a lot of these type of issues. And we have a fix for that, we have a solution. That salesman A will make a lot more money and your company will make a lot more money, leading to you making more money, but the clients will love getting, meeting the salesman because they know they're gonna get a raise next year because they can fix the actual issues that were found. Root causes for vulnerabilities. Again, tie into all of these. How, what's the root cause of this finding? Plans for the future. The future holds a lot of things. Who is still tracking issues in Excel spreadsheets? I know I haven't really met a company who does really advanced bug tracking. Maybe one or two who sell a product, but if it's just like patching issues, no, it gets printed in a report, it gets set down and never remembered until a year later when someone you know, does dust off. Even if they fix those issues, it's tracking issues. What's open, what hasn't been fixed, and what have we just accepted as the business? What are we not gonna fix? It takes too much time. I think unify unifying reports is also coming next year. Why? Because I know a company is developing a product next year um, where every one of your vulnerability reports is gonna be shoved together. Even if it's manual testing, it's gonna be shoved together where you can see all the information at any given time. Metrics analytics. This term has been used all over creation at every single company I know. What are our metrics? Why do we need metrics? Because we can't answer the simplest, stupidest questions like, are we doing better? We don't know. Just because you're finding more issues doesn't mean you're getting worse. It might be that you're getting more coverage. We're getting more clients. You know, a lot of different factors. We also can't answer questions because if we do a bunch of different assets, unifying reports and bringing that together, we'll be able to answer questions like how are our critical, you know, the ones which are external, which people can get at, how are our critical web servers doing on input validation? Questions like that we can't answer because we print off reports. We need a better solution. I hate to be, do this now and be generic, Q1 next year, there is a really freaking cool coming out, uh, tool coming out. The company hasn't announced it, so I'm not gonna ruin it for them. I was pulled in to consult on it. It's freaking awesome. It will make reporting, instead of waiting, you know, till the end of the week, even if you do report as you go, in taking, you know, th six hours, eight hours, pulling metrics together or findings, it will allow you to create reports in a matter of minutes by dragging and dropping issues onto this asset, and that's editing the, editing the necessary data. Cross-site scripting, general description and whatnot hasn't changed in a long time. And you can answer questions like that. It's designed for executives, analysts, developers, and salesmen saying, hey, sell this. Find me later for questions. If you have questions about anything I talked about, 
Even that application, I, I can't show it up here, but again, I can talk through it. Um, don't be a dumbass. Make the smart asses look better. <laughs>